Sarah, are you awake? I need to speak with you. You can't trick me into leaving the hotel room, Wesley. You can't see the bride for 24 hours before the wedding ceremony, remember? It's bad luck. Sarah, I am being serious. This is urgent. Just tell me over the phone, then. I know you don't like how superstitious I can be, but I want our wedding to be perfect. All right. The thing is, we can't get married tomorrow. We have to delay the wedding ceremony. What are you talking about? Why would we delay the wedding? The venue, the guest, the vendors, everything's ready for our big day. It's Eloise. I found her. Or rather, she found me. Eloise as in your missing ex-girlfriend, Eloise? The woman who disappeared from a cruise ship five years ago? But you said she fell overboard during the night. That's what I thought had happened. When the fishermen in the area discovered the contents of her purse in the water, everyone assumed that a tragic accident had taken place. But she's alive. She contacted me about an hour ago and told me where I could find her. I'm going to need to gather up a few documents and head to the airport. Wesley, no. You can't trust messages from a random number claiming to be your missing ex. What if someone is impersonating her? Why would she call you and not the police? She did call the police. I promise, I am certain it's her. I saw her face, I heard her voice, she seemed a little different, but it was still unmistakably her. But how is that possible? I, I don't understand, where has she been all these years? She didn't have enough time to tell me what had happened to her. They only let her talk for 15 minutes and most of that time was spent convincing me she was really who she claimed to be and not some long lost twin or a mythical apparition. Who won't let her talk? Don't tell me she's been kidnapped. Not really. She was calling from a police station. I have to go there and make sure she's all right. Go where? To the police station? Where is it exactly? Why do you have to go to the airport? I'll be flying to Ireland as soon as I can. That's where she said she was. Okay, listen. Even if it really is her, why do you have to be the one to fly to the other side of the world? Doesn't she have any family members? Doesn't she have friends? She didn't have many close friends. She was raised by her grandparents who passed away a few years before she disappeared. They were the only family she had. I know it's shocking to you, but all I'm asking you is to be a bit more empathetic about the situation. Empathetic? I'll be empathetic once I've heard the full story. For all we know, she could have been hiding voluntarily. She'd never do something like that. Why not? You said so yourself. She called you from a police station. Perhaps she had problems with the law and decided disappearing would be the easiest way out. Sarah, that's enough. I've been friends with her since high school. I know she isn't that kind of a person. Just let everyone know that the wedding's been delayed. I'll update you as soon as I have news. This can't be happening. Why today of all days? I'm sorry, I know it's not the right time for me to be upset, but I can't help feeling devastated. I get it, Sarah. I know how hard you've been working to ensure the wedding day would go smoothly. I know you've put a lot of effort into planning out every detail, but you have to understand postponing the ceremony really isn't going to take anything away from your work. We'll still get to have the wedding of our dreams. Do you promise? I do. As I said, Eloise was a good friend of mine long before we started dating. I can't just ignore her. Right now, I need to make sure that she's okay. Right, of course. I understand. Please be careful. I love you. I love you too. Did you get there safe? I was waiting for your call, but it never came. I did. The flight went well. Sorry, I was going to call you, but I was so exhausted I fell asleep as soon as I checked into the hotel room. You could have texted me, though. I was worried about you. I'm sorry. It's okay. Just don't do it again. Did you meet her? I was about to rent a car and drive to the police station. Okay. And hey, if you need bail money, just text me. <laughs> Thank you, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Right. Of course. Good luck. Thanks. So, did you see her? Is she okay? I did, and yes, she seems fine. Or, well, as fine as she could be, considering everything she's been through. What matters is that she's alive. Did you have any issues postponing the wedding? Well, we lost all of our non-refundable retainers. I am calculating the rescheduling fees, and they're starting to add up. Most of the guests seemed pretty upset about the cancellation. Some were just concerned about our relationship. I haven't been able to reach a few vendors. <laughs> 
It's complete chaos, but I am trying my best to handle everything without disclosing too much information. Thank you. I I'm lucky to have you by my side. Sure, no problem. Do you know when you'll be coming back? I need to start planning ahead. I'll be staying here for a few more days, or I guess until she is ready to leave. And how long will that take? I'm not sure. A few days, a week, a month? Your guess is as good as mine. Seriously, a month? Perhaps even longer. I'll stay here for as long as it's necessary. Did she at least tell you where she's been all these years? Did you find out why she's been arrested? I did. It's a pretty long story. I can tell you later once I get back to the hotel. For now, I need to comfort her and help out with the paperwork. Alright, but I'll be waiting for an explanation. You could text me first, you know. Right, sorry, it's been a long, emotionally draining day. It's been tiring for me too, but I've still managed to find time to check up on my future husband. Anyway, you said you'd tell me what happened to her. Can I have a quick shower first? Wesley, come on, I've been waiting all day. Okay, okay. As you know, Eloise worked as a part-time singer on cruise ships during the summer. One evening, their ship had to make an unscheduled stop in a Moroccan port to drop off a passenger who needed urgent medical attention. Since she knew the ship would be docked for a few hours, she decided to go ashore to buy a new charger for her phone since it had stopped working. She was walking around the port looking for a taxi when suddenly a stranger grabbed her purse and made a run for it. She ran after him but couldn't keep up. She kept yelling for help but nobody seemed to understand what she was saying. As the area around her became more and more unfamiliar, Eloise decided to turn back before she got too far away from the ship, but just then she saw a woman running toward her, holding her purse. She spoke in English and said she'd seen the thief take her purse and decided to return it to her. Unfortunately, the purse had been returned empty. The concerned woman said she was a tourist and offered to drive her back to the ship since it was getting dark and she could still be in danger. Eloise thanked the woman profusely and got into the car. That was when she noticed she was driving the wrong way. I don't like where this is going. Wasn't she being a bit reckless, wandering out on her own, getting into a stranger's car? I don't mean to sound accusatory, I'm just curious. Yes, well, she grew up in a very sheltered household. Her grandparents lived in a small, quiet neighborhood she never had to deal with particularly dangerous people. She didn't even like to listen to the news when they were discussing something unpleasant. Still, she eventually got bored of the small town where nothing ever changed. That was one of the reasons she wanted to work on a cruise ship. She wanted to expand her worldview and experience a life of adventure. I see. Anyway, she started asking the woman to slow down and stop the car, but she insisted she knew the shortcut and just kept speeding up. Eloise begged her to call the police, but she refused, so she reached out to grab the stranger's phone. They got into a fight and failed to notice an oncoming car which ended up crashing into the driver's side. Apparently, the woman died on impact. Fortunately, Eloise was sitting on the opposite side of the crash impact site and was wearing a seatbelt. She just barely survived the crash but ended up with severe injuries. That's insane! I guess luck was on her side that day. But I still don't understand how she ended up in Ireland. She isn't completely sure either. She was treated in a local hospital until her condition stabilized, since they were only able to find ID documents of the woman who died. I guess they assumed they must have been traveling together and arranged for her to be transported to Ireland using the stranger's information. She spent some time recovering at a voluntary hospital there. She was in a voluntary hospital for five years? Well, no. Since she'd lost her memory, she was temporarily transferred to a small town psychiatric hospital one of the nurses had worked at. I guess they assumed she'd have regained her memories much sooner. As soon as she remembered who she was, she asked to be driven to the nearest police station. She wanted to call me right away but couldn't remember my phone number. She remembered the digits but couldn't quite get the combination right, so they looked it up using my name. Wait, where is she now? Is she still at the police station? She's staying here for the night. I asked the staff for an additional bed. She's there with you? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Yes, she's in the shower. I couldn't just let them send her back to the psych ward. Once we sort out the paperwork, we'll get her stuff from the hospital and she can see a doctor back home. But she has nowhere to go. Does she have any living relatives here? Not that I know of. It's actually something I wanted to discuss with you. I was thinking of offering her to stay at my place. You wanted to discuss it with me? If I were to tell you not to do it, would you listen to me? 
Sarah, please don't blow this out of proportion. She's been through enough already. I can't let her deal with the recovery alone. And how does she feel about it? Does she feel comfortable living with her engaged ex-boyfriend? She doesn't know about it yet. She was so happy to see me, I didn't want to upset her. So you told her you were single? Well, I didn't say I was single, but I didn't say I was in a relationship either. If she asks, I'll tell her I'm single. And what are you going to tell her when she sees me coming over to your place? How are you going to explain that to her? Let's just say we're good friends for now. Gradually, over the years, we can transition into dating and later marriage. Are you suggesting we start dating all over again? We were going to get married today. How do I explain this to my friends and family? It really doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me. We'll just be delaying things a bit. Not a big deal? Wesley, I'm 32. I want to settle down and have a family of my own. I want to live in a spacious house with my husband and two kids. I thought you wanted the same thing. If we don't sell our apartments right now, we'll lose the house we've been meaning to buy for the last year and a half. If we don't start thinking about children right now, I am worried it'll only get harder and harder over the years. Right, I know. How about this? I'll tell her I'll be moving in with my friend for the time being while she's at my apartment, so as not to make her uncomfortable. She'll understand that feelings can form much faster when you're living with someone and our relationship will come as less of a shock to her. How long will that take? A year at most. Well, I, all right. If that's what it takes not to lose you. Everything's going to be just fine, I promise. If you say so, I'll call the movers. Thank you. Wesley, where are you? We were supposed to visit my parents later today, remember? I'll be there in an hour. I'm sorry, I didn't warn you in advance. I got a call from the therapist who'll be aiding Eloise with social reintegration. She asked me to accompany her to the first visit since she's felt so anxious and I couldn't turn her down. I thought the therapist's office was pretty close. Definitely not an hour-long drive. Are you sure you're still there? Well, right now we're at a cemetery. Eloise wanted to visit her grandparents' grave. I'll drop her off back at the apartment and be home in an hour. Right. Just try not to be late. I promise we'll make it to their house on time. Hello, Eloise. This is Sarah, Wesley's friend. I've been calling him, but he's not answering his phone. I was wondering if you knew where he was since he's been spending so much time over there. Sarah, hello! Wesley talks about you all the time! He fell asleep on the couch and I muted his phone so as not to wake him. Sorry, I didn't know you were the one calling. Oh, did you not see the caller ID? I tried not to sneak a peek at the screen. I don't want to invade his privacy. I see. I am glad he's okay. I trust you're taking good care of him. Me? Oh no, he's the one who's taking care of me. <laughs> he's been just wonderful. I don't know what I'd do without him by my side. Yes, he told me about your accident. I'm sure it hasn't been easy for you. I have to say, I really admire your perseverance. Thank you, but I think you're giving me more credit than I deserve. If anything, I've just been careless and naive letting life push me around. If I am alive and well today, it's thanks to the kindness and diligence of the many selfless people who went out of their way to help out a complete stranger. And, well, some blind luck too. <laughs> of course, but your will to keep on fighting is also commendable. Wesley told me you were already thinking of going back to school. I. Uh, Yes, it's unfortunate, but I seem to have lost my voice. I couldn't sing no matter how much I tried, so I knew it was time for a career change. Back at the hospital, I started helping out the nurses to somehow repay for their kindness. It was tough at first, but I quickly got the hang of it. I know changing your career path in your 30s can be really challenging, but I'm really eager to pursue a degree in nursing. I am happy to hear that you didn't have any issues with the nurses. Of course! To this day, I am very fond of every single one of them. They took me in and treated me like family. Please, don't take this the wrong way, but did you ever consider staying there? Oh, I mean, as thoughtful as everyone was in there, it was still a psych ward. Living on my own after all these years feels really liberating. Right, sorry, that was an insensitive question. It's fine, you were just asking out of curiosity. I wanted to thank you too, Sarah. What for? I know it must be difficult for you to see your fiancé spending so much time next to his ex. I just want you to know that his help has been invaluable to me. Wesley told you about us? When? 
Well, he hasn't said anything, but I did notice an engagement ring on his finger when he first came to see me. He moved in with you and always spoke with you when he came over. I just put two and two together. I guess my assumption was right. I am sorry you had to find out this way, but he just wanted to protect your feelings. I know, I'm not mad at him or at you. It's the opposite, really. I am grateful that both of you were so considerate. The only reason I am bringing it up now is that I don't want you to feel like my presence is a threat to your relationship. It's true that during the five years we dated, we loved each other very much and got along great, but a lot has happened since then. I am not the same woman he fell in love with. I'm just a shell of my former self. You have nothing to worry about. Oh, please don't say that. If I do have any doubts about our relationship, it's not because of anything you've done. And if we do part ways, I sincerely hope you don't blame yourself. But you don't have to break up with him. I'll move out soon enough. I'll gradually distance myself from him. You don't have to do that. I've just been dragging my feet, trying to delay this conversation for as long as possible. Please don't mention what we talked about to him. I'll have a serious discussion with him when he gets home tonight. Sure, I won't say a word. That night, we had a long discussion about our future moving forward. Just as I'd suspected, Wesley was no longer sure he was ready to marry me. He admitted he felt confused about his feelings for me and wanted to take a break to rethink everything. It was painful for both of us, but we realized that our goals no longer seemed to align and we'd been plagued by fears and doubts for too long. We agreed to go our separate ways. It's been four years since we split. Yesterday, I got married to a man who shared many of my views on life. He's a widower and a single father to his six-year-old daughter. This time, I made sure to check the death certificate twice. We'll be moving into our new house in a few days. As for Eloise and Wesley, I have no idea what their relationship status may be, but I know they're still living together. She completed an accelerated nursing program, passed the exam, and got her license. The last I heard of her, she was working in the mental health field. I guess life really is full of surprises. I was so blinded by my jealousy that I wasn't able to see how incredible Eloise's reappearance had been. He must have been absolutely overjoyed to see her alive. And there I was, wishing it had been a cruel prank call. Maybe they were meant to be together all along. I honestly wish them nothing but the best.